Hey, what's going on YouTube? Kenny here and today we're going to talk about Michael Berry. So Christian in the chat asked me to put some coverage against Michael Berry. He said nothing specific, but I was able to find some really interesting things. So I put together this video for y'all. Uh, anyways, uh, I found out that Michael Berry has an 18% portfolio weight in a interesting name uh, that I had not ever even thought to look at. So we're going to look at that and we're also going to look at his ARC K short, obviously, that controversy. We're not going to go too much into the controversy, but just kind of talk about why he's setting up his position. We're going to talk about shipping containers because he's still bullish on shipping containers. And we're going to talk about his top five holdings as well, uh, at least coming into Q3. So if you don't know who Michael Berry is, he was basically famous for the movie that he was portrayed in called The Big Short, uh, where essentially he uncovered the fraud that is America's subprime mortgage fiasco back in the 2000s. So by shorting or betting against the housing market, he was able to generate a reported, I think, $700 million for his clients uh, slash investors and for himself about $100 million. Anyways, we're going to get into all that stuff. But if you're new to this channel, Redcliffe Research is an independent research firm that deals heavily in quant, uh, trying to bring that nice little quant to the retail investors, y'all. Uh, so we have a data analytics background. We always look to determine the signal from the noise and set up trades based on that. That said, sometimes we look at macro trades as well, and we always definitely try to figure out how the best traders Michael Berry, for one, uh, are doing things and try to set up uh, the trades uh, in tandem if if it makes sense for us. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. But the first thing I want to show you is this uh, 13F metrics. So this is a way for folks based on the 13F filings, which are the filings that show uh, whatever the funds are buying. Uh, you know, there is latency here, but uh, as you can see, uh, he's doing really well right now. Uh, up about 96.47% in the last four quarters. So doing quite amazing. Uh, that said, the market's been choppy, 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 and you can still see an uptrend here, an uptick. So he's doing very well for himself. So if you go to his website, the home site here, it's pretty interesting. And the reason why I say it's interesting is because really you can only click on two buttons, home or contact. And if you click on contact, it just says Scion Asset Management uh, at info or whatever .com. Uh, So I just thought it was really cool that it's kind of cryptic and it's not trying to sell you anything. He's like, yeah, uh, we don't really need your money. Uh, I'm going to make money on my own. I love to see that. Renaissance Technologies is a company that does a similar thing. You definitely cannot invest in them. <laughs> so... So this is the tweet that kind of set up the tweet storm that they say uh, against uh, Kathy Wood. So the ARC Innovation Fund, you're sure you're familiar with it, uh, is uh, very tech heavy, very innovation driven. Uh, and this tweet kind of came out uh, suggesting uh, that uh, Michael Berry's basically put positions uh, were exposed. And so Kathy Wood uh, definitely responded to that. But I want to kind of talk to you about... Um, you know, why Michael Berry is on that side of the trade and kind of what uh, what kind of fractal he sees from history. So what he sees is this fund here, the PBHG fund suffer a wave of redemption. So this is from 1997 going into the 2000s, right? So I guess uh, this fund was a RK-esque fund. I'm not going to say very exactly similar, but it was like value tech, right? So innovation technologies. Uh, and apparently, you know, had a great run, but in uh, 1999, it fell by 34%. And then in 2001, another 30%. Uh, RK, you know, if you look at the turn of the corner, uh, it is down negative 4% this year, I believe, uh, coming off of 150% high of last year. So with that said, obviously, uh, one can want to draw some parallels, may want to take a look at how that's playing out. But uh, I'll just kind of read this because it's kind of interesting. So PBHG Funds is one of the best performance mutual fund companies in the 90s. So this remember, this is a 1990, uh, 1997 article. Has suffered shareholder redemptions of more than 6% of the company's assets in recent weeks as the performance of its fund dropped sharply. Um, the idea here is I'm talking about 1997. So this is 97. I remember uh, I was saying 99 in 2001. It dropped again and again and again. What is my point? Uh, it may take some time to play out, but obviously Michael Berry um, is one of those people who has seen the market for a while and is definitely going to be patient with his money. And that makes sense looking at his like largest holding that we were talking about here. 
So this is the tweet itself. I don't want to get too much into the kind of controversy, really not about that right now. Uh, Y'all hate it when I talk about controversy, and I don't like it either. So let's just talk about what she thinks. Basically, she says, to his credit, Michael Berry has made great calls based on fundamentals and recognized the calamity brewing in the housing market, which is super interesting when you say to his credit. I love it when uh, smart people uh, really think about the other side of the trade because, you know, critical thinking – you know, whether she's right or wrong, whether Michael Berry is right or wrong, the part that you need to apply is the critical thinking piece, right? You don't want to blindly just, you know, uh, flip a coin and try to figure out what side of the trade you're in. Or maybe you would, <laughs> maybe you could if you're a, a casino, right? And you set it up correctly. But anyways, you get my point. I do not believe he understands the fundamentals that are creating the explosive growth and investment opportunities of the innovation space. This is hilarious because do you think that Michael Berry really hasn't considered this? Uh, so anyways, I feel like this is a little bit uh, glib, uh, really off-putting when it when it comes to kind of the way that it's portrayed, but that's fine. I mean, she is definitely entitled to her own opinion. And of course, uh, the one thing that I would say about Kathy Wood is, you know, she's one of the very few people who think, you know, the infl- inflation is not going to play out the way uh, that we think it's going to play out. So, you know, if she's right, uh, she will be a contrarian genius. Um, but if uh, most people are right, and we've printed a little bit too much money, and inflation's coming. Then yes, growth probably will slow down, and we'll talk about that in another episode. But I just want to kind of set that up for you here. So he's still buying into shipping. So Barry sold most of his holdings uh, in the shipping kind of space, transport space in the first quarter, uh, in the end of June, but he didn't sell all of them. So there's two that he's holding on to right now, and that is in the form of uh, Golden Ocean Group G O G L. And then also Scorpio Tankers STNG. And if you've ever followed the Red Cliff Research, if you're not new here, you know that we are in the uh, shipping trade. Uh, Tommy D- did done did a lot of research uh, showing us why shipping containers uh, and the price of shipping containers and that in- uh, the entire supply chain um, is still uh, kind of busted. And so it should still be very, very lucrative to take this trade. Michael Berry agrees. And again, we do know that 400% uh, upcharge in container shipping. And one of the interesting things, not interesting, but one of the things that's really primal to the shipping kind of industry is that it can price that to the consumer or the end end consumer, which in my, most cases are companies like Corsair. So Corsair even mentioned it in their uh, earnings report. So, I mean, if this continues and it looks like it will, um, you know, Michael Berry is on the right side of the trade for sure. And, uh, we are in the trade as well. So next I want to talk about the top five editions. So this is August 25th, 2021, but I just want to kind of break them down. So you have Walmart and Kraft Heinz. These are consumer defensive, uh, McKesson. It's a healthcare company and then Google and Facebook. And I'm going to bin these in tech and mega cap. And I'm going to show you why that I think why I think that's important. Uh, sorry, itching my nose, so I couldn't couldn't talk properly there. Um, okay, so this is the sector rotation chart. So if you think about it in this way, right, uh, this is pretty standard fare. And if you think it's standard fare, and if you think that we're at a market top, which indeed he probably thinks we are, because if we're at a market top, then we're essentially right here, and we're getting ready to bottom, right? So it looks like Michael Berry is setting up his portfolio to take care of that, right? So what's he in? Staples, right? And he's in healthcare. Okay, so that would say that we're going into a bear market. So two two lines here. First is the actual stock market. The second line is where the economy is. So the economy is fully recovering. That checks out. That story makes sense. And then the market is getting toppy. So we're probably about here at the market. So he's setting up for this. And you say, Kenny, why doesn't he have, ener- why doesn't he have energy? Well, a lot of people think energy is completely different now uh, in terms of where it is and kind of how uh, the outlook for energy is. And plus, uh, you know, we can audit his portfolio and kind of look for that too. I didn't have a chance to do that, but maybe he does have some energy. But then you say, hey, Kenny, what about technology? Why does he have uh, these big tech names? So again, the one thing that I will say is those two names are very, very large mega cap tech companies. So because of that, uh, I think it's a flight to safety. It's a flight to uh, very just principled investing when it comes to just, you know, think about these companies as 
stable bonds, if you will. And that's why they're so big. Uh, it's almost like you're going to get something out of them, but you're not going to get these big movements. It's more to stabilize your portfolio than anything. And I think that's what he's looking at as well. Uh, can't tell for sure, but just kind of a thought. So in terms of his biggest holding, it's Discovery Communications. It's worth 18% of his portfolio, which is absolutely bonkers. Uh, and if he had a kind of public portfolio or ETF or something like that, you know, past 10% is really sketchy. But obviously, it's a private fund. He can do whatever he wants, 18% of his portfolio. And he bought it $28.98, uh, so $24 million worth. Uh, Discovery is in the process of merging with Warner Media. It's really the most kind of news or catalyst driven things I could find. Uh, but I don't know too much about it and I haven't really dug deep. There's no kind of coverage on tip ranks, but just remember this was part of the Archegos uh, kind of short uh, selling um, kind of squeeze here. Uh, not squeeze, I'm sorry. Uh, that whole kind of meltdown based on the CFDs. But anyways, you can see Archegos. Uh, it, uh, that whole that whole thing just just took a dive, uh, sitting on the floor at twenty six seventy one, and again he bought at twenty eight ninety eight, uh, so he's up here somewhere and he felt fine about that. But you can see this nice little consolidation range right here. Um, you know, if indeed you wanted to take a trade like this, you could just go long vol and uh, buy a straddle like we've been talking about, and you know, um, really profit from this or this and or. You can take a look at some theta decay because, I mean, an iron Connor wouldn't be terrible here based on the kind of the chart. But I do think there may be a breakout soon, so I definitely wouldn't hold that for very long, maybe weeklies at most. But anyways, uh, chart looks really juicy, and I definitely realize, I mean, I can definitely see why he's interested. But I just want to make a comparison to another company that he held for a while that you all know and love. Uh, GameStop and you can see it had that consolidating channel as well and you know he had plenty of time to hold this and he held it uh, apparently he got out somewhere over here right before this mess but you can see where this is going right and I'm not saying that this is gonna match this but I mean I think what he's looking for is something like this uh, and so if that does happen you know as a value investor I think that's completely fair completely acceptable. So yeah, that was just some really fast coverage on Michael Berry. I do realize that he has this uh, this uh, treasury play as, when, uh, as well against the 20-year, but uh, we'll cover that in a different time. I felt like it would be a little bit too complicated, too complex for this video, but I did want to uh, put some coverage against him because very, very interesting, very, very profound investor. Uh, he does uh, take a lot of contrarian moves, and obviously people love to follow him. So uh, yeah. Tell me what you think in the comments. If you're new to this channel, let me know that you made it all the way to the end. I'd <laughs> love to see it. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.